Asante sana. Asante, asante. 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 to have such a gathering with my sisters from the Muslim community. I'm most grateful to my sister, Honorable Fatma Ibrahim, Ambassador Rukia Sobu, my friend of many years, and many, many dignitaries who are here, plus all the sisters who are here this evening. Today is a great day for me in two ways. In the morning, during the morning hours, I met with another large number of Muslim women, and these were widows. And uh, I know they would also have liked to celebrate with me the way we are celebrating today, but because it was not possible, I only gave them something, some foodstuffs to go and celebrate with their, their children. Of course, they don't have husbands, they're widows. With their children. As we celebrate as women, we must always also remember the less unfortunate women in our midst. Ramadan uh, time is a very important time in the lives of Muslims. Why do I say so? 
Because this time of the year, you dedicate your life to God. You dedicate your life to prayers. You pray for several things. You deny yourself food during the day so that the love that you have and the God that you pray for who lives wherever he lives can listen to you and grant you the prayers of your heart. So we don't take it lightly. As Christians, we have the period of Lent, which is 40 days. It is broken during the Easter time. That's when we broke the Lent. We may also try, but I would say you are very dedicated. And I thank God for that kind of thing. It is a time that you connect yourself to your creator. So, uh, something that we cannot take lightly. Now, as I listen to you this evening, you've talked about very many things and very important things. I try to note them down so that some of them, or most of them, action can be taken. But my friend, Fatma, Ibrahim, and many of you who are le leaders in your own right, you are leaders in your own rights. I would suggest that some of these issues that are so pertinent to you form a small committee to address those issues. Because we cannot do it in a gathering like this. I fully recognize the leaders who are here. You've been paraded. We have a lady who is going for position of senator. Keep it up, wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Keep it up. We have ladies who are going for women MPs. They are there, hmm? include the women reps and MP position, members of parliament. Ladies, maybe just stand once again, let them see you. You see those ladies, I call them women of courage. Women of courage, it is not easy. It is not easy. I know there are also women who are going for M MCA positions, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, you also. It is not easy. It is difficult for women. And it is even more difficult for Muslim women. Yes. Keep it up. And I pray may God see you through in whatever you are going for. But I ask the rest of us, this is the time that they are calling for your support as a fellow woman. You know, personally, when it comes to women in leadership, I cross the boundaries. It doesn't matter where you come from, I'll support you. It doesn't matter what religion you are, I'll support you. I cross the boundaries and I encourage them because I know when a woman becomes a leader, she look at the plight of all the women, not only the women in their region. And you ladies who, have, who stood here, who are going to be leaders, please remember you are going to represent women from all Qadar, not just a section, whether they are in your party or not, whether they are in your religion or not. I know there are other things that 
that separates us. But I would like you to work for the women so that we can see the beauty. In Kenya, the population of women, women forms 52% of the population. Men are 48. Huh? And when you count the actual people who vote, who cast their votes into that debate, 60% of the population who cast the vote are women. Men are 40%. Surely, if you want a woman to lead, is there something that will stop us? Is there something that will stop us? You have said it, not me. We must also cultivate love for one another. We must cultivate love for one another. We can't afford to be quarreling one another. We can't afford to have chaotic campaigns. We can't. Where there is no peace, and you women, particularly the women from Northeastern, when there is no peace, the people who suffer most are women and children. I'll give you a story that once I heard that whatever I try to do, that story sticks in my head. It cannot go. This is way back in the year 2010 when there was problems in our neighbors Somalia. And I was working on issues of education for children in the refugee camps. And there was this lady from Somalia. She had three children. The eldest, who was about 10, was a disabled child, crippled. Then the other one was about five, and then she had a baby. So as they were running, coming to the refugee camp, she had to carry the crippled baby who was 10 years old with that weight, and she had to carry the baby. And she also had to hold the hand of the five-year-old and encourage him to walk. It came to a point where she could not manage with the three children. And she was forced to do something. Which child does she leave behind? Mothers, put yourself in position of that lady. Which one would you leave behind? Some people who, I, who are, they are working with said, leave the crippled one. Some people said, leave the small one, the baby. After all, he knows nothing. It is a very difficult decision to make for mothers. So as mothers, we must make sure that we cultivate this peace so that there is peace for us and our children. Don't ask me where the men were. They were in the bush fighting. You understand the importance of peace in our nation. You understand the importance of peace